Hi everyone, I wanted to make a video like that. Okay, so then getting on to the... And so both those uh, pipes go into... Hi everyone, I wanted to make a video just to show um, my DIY simple grey water recycling system that feeds to a sprinkler. Um, I'll try and keep this video as short as possible, but just wanted to show you the basic setup and how it works. Um, and then I plan to make a few more videos uh, along the line that will show exactly step by step how I went about this, um, as well as some uh, considerations that you might want to take into account before you actually even start uh, putting your system together. Um, in my case, I uh, needed a pump system because my back garden is slightly higher than the exit of my drain um, which means that I couldn't use a gravity fed system but if you can use a, a gravity fed system that is probably the, the cheapest and simplest way to go and it's still effective and it does the job but for me and for a lot of people uh, they'll probably need a pump system um, and so I just wanted to make this video to show you how I put together my pump system so firstly um, this is the drain pipe that comes from my shower. Originally, this pipe um, was attached to this pipe like this. It was one continuous pipe that goes towards the drain outlet there. As you can see, that's pretty gross. <laughs> um, but I bought this fitting that's like a flexi hose uh, fitting that you just slide on there um, and I didn't uh, PVC weld it or anything because it's low pressure so even, and even if there is a drip or two coming out of there uh, which there hasn't been it's not a problem but also importantly because I'm renting this house so I didn't want to make uh, changes to the, the infrastructure that I couldn't easily reverse and with this this way I can just basically slip this out and put a connector and connect that pipe back onto there and everything is as it was originally. Um, you'll notice that my, I've sunk my tank so that it's lower than the outlet from the wall of the coming from the shower. The shower floor level is round about there so it's important to have this uh, holding tank um, lower than that so that you can feed by gravity into the tank. Um, on this side, this is my drain outlet um, or drain uh, drain area and this, this outlet here comes from the washing machine in the kitchen and all I've used to attach this is a, this is a, a rubber stopper that you buy at any hardware store that uh, can that you normally put at the bottom of a table or a chair leg to protect the floor and then just drill the hole into that um, see if I can do it it's one handed and connected a normal hose pipe fitting in there that's not even stuck in there it's just screwed on um, so it's also low pressure and then that connects into a hose pipe normal standard hose pipe fitting um, and that fits in that drain pipe quite snugly. Uh, the nice thing about a, this outlet is that um, I've actually for the past year or so been using it to feed into this holding tank which you can see is actually higher than that outlet but because the inlet for this pipe is um, up at this level somewhere there's still a, a drop so that um, between that height and this height so that this water can actually rise up here and drain into this holding container and then I used to uh, use buckets to uh, go from here to the garden which um, yeah, is quite labor intensive but it works so just an um, important note on that if you don't have space to round your house I was fortunate that um, I have this uh, Flower, empty flower bed uh, right next to the drain area so I could drop my box uh, down lower into the ground so that it's below my shower level but if you don't have that if you have paving all the way and you're renting or you're not prepared to um, 
to uh, lift up your paving, a section of your paving to sink this holding container in, then you can still use a, a container sitting on top of the paving as long as the, the height of this container is lower than the height of your entry point um, inlet pipe from your um, basins or washing machine or whatever it might be. Um, so you can still capture some of your, your grey water like that. Okay, so then getting on to the, the sort of system itself. Um, so those two pipes, that pipe there from the shower, this pipe here from the, the kitchen washing machine, uh, feed into the tank there. And then I'll lift up the tank. So this is a temporary holding tank, storage tank. Um, this particular one is a 160 litre container um, and so both those uh, pipes go into a very simple filter system this is just a, um, a pool filter that I bought from a hardware store I've lined it with a stocking which stretch, stretches over the edges quite nicely and keeps it tight and then I've just uh, used another plastic um, thing just to keep the stocking open so that these pipes can just sit in there and the water drains through there, drains into there and then through the stocking which filters uh, all the hard bits or, or bigger bits out of it and then into the holding tank. Um, so as you can see the tank now is, is almost full and I'm going to add, add a little bit of water manually just so that you can see the pump going on. Um, that there is the float switch of the pump. So as that rises, it switches on the pump. Um, and then as the water level drops again, the, the float switch drops with the water level and it switches it off. So I'm gonna add some water in there and hopefully it will switch on. That float switch is adjustable, so depending on the size of your container, there is some room to adjust it uh, to go on and off at different levels. But I'll make a separate video um, showing you exactly how that is done and some additional adjustments that I've made uh, for this particular tank. There we go, just switched on. Um, you can see I've adjusted it so that it switches on very near the top of, when the water is very near the top level of the tank. Um, you can choose to, to adjust it so that it switches on a little bit earlier, um, but I wouldn't leave it much later. And so I'm gonna go in really close. You can barely hear the, the pump operating. It's a, it's a really quite a quiet pump. I've been really impressed with how it works and um, that it's not loud. I was expecting quite a loud sound to come from it, but you can barely hear it. Uh, so I'll just keep quiet for a second. You can see the water, you might be able to see the water pumping through there, through that clear pipe. Um, and then you can see the water levels dropping slowly as it's pumping. This pump is rated to pump um, 8,000 liters per hour, which is about 133 liters per minute. That's at its maximum capacity, but uh, when you reduce it, um, the outlet pipe, the size of the outlet pipe, and you have a long distance of hose pipe to your sprinkler, um, it reduces that pressure. But uh, it's still sufficient to, to work well with the sprinkler if you connect a 20 millimeter hose pipe um, to the outlet pipe. Um, a 12 millimeter hose pipe doesn't work too well as it uh, reduces the pressure too much to really use a, a sprinkler but you can still 
use it as a as a hose or just a free flow onto the lawn if you wanted to uh, do it that way if you have a 12 millimeter hose pipe and you don't want to invest in the 20 millimeter so let me just walk through to the garden where this hose pipe is spraying at the moment and i hope you can see that so this hose pipe runs all the way around the garden like that in a in a big arch. Uh, the reason I've done that is because if you have small little loops or sharp corners in the hose pipe, it also reduces, causes more friction, reduces the pressure of the um, within the hose, and obviously then you get a, a smaller spraying radius or diameter of the sprinkler. Um, I hope you can see on the the video how sort of widely it's spraying at the moment, um, but. Uh, see the distance from the, the sprinkler over there to that paving over there is about three meters and you can see it's going about another half a meter onto the paving um, so it's about a three to three and a half meter radius or six to seven meter diameter on this current sprinkler as you can see I don't have a huge difference in elevation from my pump to where this garden is obviously the higher your garden is um, compared to your pump the lower the pressure will be and if you're fortunate that your garden is lower than your pump then you may, might not need a pump system in the first place but you'll get a higher pressure from that um, and therefore a bigger spraying radius so um, yeah if you have any comments or questions uh, please contact me please feel free to contact me um, and I'll post the the next few videos um, showing a bit more details on how I put the system together and like I said a few key considerations just to show you I'm just gonna manually force this pump off now so if the water level drops 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 to there then um, the pump switches off and you can hear you can see there's no more water flowing through there so it's it's actually switched off um, thanks everyone for watching. Feel free to comment and uh, send me any questions that you have. Be happy to help you set up your system as well. All the best. Bye bye.